Okay, these calculations can be a little tedious, and uh, I'll give you the idea on how to do it, and then we'll go to a website that will do the calculations for you. So we have this function, g of x equals, well, that's this parabola right here. Uh, we're told to find the area under the curve from 2 to 5. So here's 2, here's the right-hand endpoint at 5 divide it into six rectangles and use that to approximate the area under the curve. Okay, and the key is that the width, we're gonna make the width of each rectangle the same. So that's B minus A over the number of subintervals. And in this case, six rectangles. Well, five minus two is three, three over six. Each of these little rectangles has a width of one half. If we're going to use left-hand endpoints, we want to start here at the at A, find F of A, which will give us the height of this rectangle, and then multiply by the width, and that'll give us the area of rectangle number one. And we do the same thing for the remaining one, two, three, four, five rectangles, six in all. Add up those areas, and we've got an approximation for the area under the curve. Since this curve is concave upward, we'll have an underestimate because all, if we're using left-hand endpoints, all these rectangles will be under the curve. Okay, now I'm sharing my screen. I'll go to Desmos and show you where I got that picture. Here you can type any function you want. 2x squared minus x minus 1. Specify the left-hand endpoint with a slider. So here I had it set to 2. Whoop. Specify the right-hand end, right endpoint, B. Specify the number of intervals. So you can increase the number of rectangles. And of course, that's what a definite integral is. We let the number of rectangles approach infinity and we get closer and closer to the true area. And then the slider for C controls whether we have left-hand endpoints, midpoints, or right-hand endpoints. And I'll leave it at left-hand endpoints. This I equals the sum from I equals zero to N minus one of f of s sub i times w, that's actually the sum of the areas of all these rectangles, where s sub i is each endpoint, f of s sub i is the height, and w is the width. Okay, and this little table here you can add additional rows to if you're increasing the number of rectangles. But if you leave it like this, from 0 to 5, you've got your six rectangles. This column is actually S of X of I is the value of the left-hand endpoint. You can see we've got 2 there. We've got 2 and a half. We've got 3 and so on to 4.5. And F of X of I gives us the height at each of those endpoints. Uh, and here we've got the actual area under the curve is 64.5. So you can see for six rectangles, uh, we don't have a very good approximation. If I go to right-hand endpoints, then 2.5 is the first, is the right-hand endpoint uh, of the first rectangle. And F of S of I is the height, which is 9, times the width will give us the area of the first rectangle. Add those all together, and you get 74.5, an overestimate of the true area. And of course, if we increase the number of intervals or rectangles to quite a few, so here we have the sum of all those rectangles is 65.2. 64.5 is the true area. So we get closer and closer as the number of rectangles approaches infinity. Okay, there you go. Hope that helped.
Uh, you can use this table to actually calculate the areas uh, or figure out what the calculations are. So there, there you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, uh, post a comment. Thank you.